Hello everybody, my name is Tiffany, I'm the Tipsy Artist, and today we are going live to teach you how to paint this beautiful barn called Bless Our Home. So it's super sweet, it's always been a huge popular painting for us at all of our shows when we used to travel around and do the studio shows. Um, so let me show you the traceable, that's what we're going to start with today. So we have this awesome traceable, this is available on our website as either a digital download. Um, or you can do the whole kit and we just ship everything to you. So we'll send you the graphite paper and the traceable and the paint and the brushes and the canvas and everything. So it's super awesome. We make it super easy for you. All right. So, uh, and by the way, if you're on our website, which is tipsyartist.com and you cannot find anything, there's usually always a form at the top um, that says email us and we'll just send you the direct link and that way you don't have to search through 600 products to try to find what you're looking for. We can always just get you whatever you need. So, or we'll just make it right then. <laughs> so that's just how we are right now. Um, and always. All right. So let's talk about this traceable. So I've got it printed off super easy. And then I just have it here on my canvas. We're going to do a little demonstration on this since this is kind of a new concept for a lot of people. And then I've got the graphite paper attached. And I always put this slick side down facing the canvas. And I just use some pretty simple scotch tape to go ahead and keep it securely in place. Um, I do try to make sure it's on a steady surface. And you know, I'll usually always add my hand to create a little additional stabilization to the process just to make sure that all the lines end up being in the same place. And then what I do is I use a colored pencil. This way I can see where I have done all my drawing. So it's very helpful. That way I don't keep retracing the same steps. I used to use um, like a ballpoint pen or even a pencil, but it, it, it gets so, it's, it's so much in light color with the ink that you can't quite tell where you've been and then you discover you're just spending hours retracing the same thing. So this is a beautiful thing, just having a colored pencil nearby. And then we'll just go ahead and get started. So this runs off a little bit here, which is awesome. And this also runs off a little bit here on this edge so that I get the full uh, measure of the design on the canvas. And we'll just start tracing it out. And then you'll just be amazed at what it looks like when we're done because it really does just transfer the entire image on the canvas, which is wonderful. And this provides all the details, which is also wonderful. And so these are also very reusable, multiple uses that you can get out of these. And if you like certain elements with the traceable and you wanna reuse them somewhere else, that's really easy too. So you could take this whole heart uh, with the roses and the arrows and the feathers and you could actually apply it to another design. So just like we used to do with our templates, we have the same versatility with the templates, but actually a lot more detail. So I really love this process. And then the other thing that you can do too is you can be a little bit more minimal with your tracing in the beginning. And you can always come back in over the top too and put in additional shapes later. So that's another option as well. So you would just with that, you would just really want to make sure that obviously your paint would be completely dry. And then you could come back in with the traceable and whatever design you want to do, place it over the top and then transfer that image over the top. And it will do a really nice light, like pencil rubbing over the surface, which is really nice. So like right here, I've got little tiny wreath now I've provided a lot of detail on my wreath just to give you that reference that they are roses because I end up painting over so much of that detail and it all becomes lost. I'm not going to do the full transfer process. A lot of that detail was just for y'all and not really so much for me because, or even really for y'all at home, honestly, you're gonna end up painting over it too. So having said that, the detail could just be used as a secondary step so that later, after the paint dries, you could actually come back in with the detail and then just do the rubbing afterwards too. So very helpful. And that's only if you like to work that way. Um, I actually will teach you how to paint rose detail and 
I think you'll find that just doing it in a very free, organic way is actually the way to go. It's a lot more fun and it's very effective. But every once in a while, I'm off the canvas there, so I don't even worry about that line. All right, awesome. Okay, so now I've got a little line for the architecture there. Another line here. All right, we'll start to do our cute little heart here. And this will actually be easier on you. A lot of y'all are working on a flat surface. Your dining room table at home, great surface area. So it's a lot easier to keep this very secured. I'm having to work in a vertical setting so that you can see it and we can still have a conversation about it. So, again, much easier just to go ahead and lay it flat. And this is just an 11 by, no wait, is this an eight by 10? Oh, this is an eight by 10, so sweet, okay. Hello, I'm doing great, how are you doing today? And hello to everybody out there. I see a lot of people on. I can't say everybody's names, but. All right, so now I'm doing feathers. So I absolutely love the eight by 10 sizes and the 11 by 14s because I find that I'm much more able to give them as gifts. Uh, the 16 by 20, while still giftable, is pretty big. And you just never really know if you're overwhelming someone's space with that big piece. Hello, Rhonda. And yes, good afternoon. But with these smaller sizes, they're just very charming as little gifts. They're very easy to Place on a little easel, place on your shelf, or hang on the wall, either way. But very versatile that way, very sweet. More little feathers here. another little feather and then we have this kind of grassy area coming up all right now I can start to work in some of that detail yes me too all right who have we got here that I can see I can't see everybody but here we go hello Rhonda Tina Christopher <laughs> welcome and yes I love all barns and houses too um, one of these days really quickly I need to get out and just go take a bunch of pictures around our area and then turn those into paintings It's time for another photo shoot. I need some fresh material, so. Hello, Donna, welcome. So I'm just making these nice little reference lines for all that old wood coming across the barn here. which is kind of optional, I would say. Hello, Keisha, how are you? Yes, <laughs> I saw you earlier. Welcome, welcome. Yeah, it's weird. I see a big numbers up there, so there's a lot of people, and then, oh, and Paula, just now saying that name. <laughs> so you draw old barns and houses and you haven't learned how to paint them yet. Well, this is a great place to start. I actually prefer painting everything. I have a major in painting from college and a minor in drawing. And I always loved painting way more than drawing. Right, 
So now we have it. This is our fence post that I'm doing right now. All right, let's see, there's a line there. And then I still have to do the lettering. And let me grab another fresh colored pencil here nearby. Yeah, yes, it is, I'd rather paint. Yeah, uh, it is interesting, the preference that some people have. Um, I don't know. Now, one thing that I used to love to do when I was younger, I used to actually love to do pen and ink drawings and some stippling effects with that. And that was pretty fun. But still, over time, I just learned that I definitely grew to have more appreciation for paint than anything else. And I also tried watercolor for a long time. And I just, I love more forgiveness with acrylic. And yes, I'm doing good. <laughs> doing really good, actually. Got some sleep. Do you ever feel that way? You just need some sleep? I swear sometimes as adults, we just, we need naps just like little kids. And we get really grumpy and we have little fits. And then when our kids are little, we always just tell them to go take a nap. But we're like, oh my goodness, that kid needs a nap. And I think many times as adults, we just need to look at each other and go, oh my goodness, she needed a nap. <laughs> so. It is very real. All right, cute little hearts here. Cute little heart here. And then, now this lettering is also definitely something that can be done later. As a final step, like after your paint dries, you can put it on a little bit later, but for the sake of time with filming, I just do everything at the very beginning. And then we'll kind of go over some of those steps too. Okay, so let's do a little lift off. All right, bless our home. Got our fence posts, grass. Okay, so I think we are all good. All right, so I'm gonna do the lift off there. So it's magic. <laughs> It definitely works so well, okay? All right, hello, Debra. <laughs> All right, uh, yes, you're so tired right now, you need a nap, see what I mean? Naps are so good, they're golden. <laughs> you should take a nap after this. <laughs> so, my husband says I always put him right to sleep when I do these, and I'm not sure how to take that, but <laughs> he says, well, it's because you're so peaceful. I'm like, well, thank you. <laughs> so, All right, um, so I have, actually, let's see how to, there, there we go, we can see it. There we go, okay. So, what I'm going to do now to make sure that you can see this really, really well throughout the process, is I am gonna go ahead and firm this up with a Sharpie. Um, there's two rules here on this, basically. Um, if I prefer a lot of hard line edges with my stylized type of painting, um, but if you definitely want a very soft muted look, then I would encourage you just to go ahead and leave pencil lines. Both looks are very beautiful uh, with the painting process. So either way, there's really, there's no judgment either way. It's just what, it's just a taste thing, really what you like. Um, but I also do the Sharpie in the beginning so that you as a viewer can really see clearly what I'm doing as well. So it works in both worlds that it's a certain style that I have, but also, makes it to where you can see it really well. All right, so I'm gonna go over my letters. Now, quick little word of caution on the letters is every time you go over the loops, you wanna make sure that you are going around the loop and not in the middle of the loop so that you don't lose the actual negative space in the middle of that loop. 
So that's important both with the tracing and with the painting. So see, I have a loop coming here. So I'm gonna make sure that my negative space in the center is completely left wide open and I made sure to take that line on the outside so that that space is preserved. I have one here with the E too, so I make sure to go on the outside of it so that I don't close it off. Tiny loop there. And same here with our S. All right, so this is looking great. Little O, U, R, little hearts. And that'll bleed right through the paint too here in a minute, so. Or you can, if you like the white space, you can actually just leave it as white space too. So lots of options as you go through this process because it is really pretty to have just white space around an image. Lots of artwork and prints are done with just the white space still left. Oh, you're going to Ponca City today. Yes, that's a fun place actually. We used to do a lot of shows there. We used to do shows at Zeno's. See if you know that place. I don't know if you're gonna know it or not, but uh, Zeno's Italian restaurant, they went out of business, sadly, but we used to do a lot of shows there upstairs. It was a really cool place. Great food, so good. And then there's also a great marina there that rents out pontoon boats, and they're really affordable. One of the best places in Oklahoma, like a best kept secret. And I wish I remembered the name of it, but if you just look up um, Ponca City Pontoon Boats, like it comes right up. And love that place. And then they also have Frank Lloyd Wright's uh, home there as well. His architecture is on, I think, I don't think they do tours there or you can stop by and see it. But there's a lot of cool stuff in Ponca City. So that's a really fun place. All right, little details. So all this will really start to pop out. No, never heard of it. Oh, that's sad. Well. Also, that, punk, that place in Ponca City that has the, uh, wait, but a little piece of wood here, so, hold on. That place in Ponca City that has the um, marina, which is still open, is my understanding. Um, they have a lot of live music there too. And I would think that it would still be going, even with everything going on right now, the idea is to get outside and spread out and they definitely have that kind of environment. So it's quite lovely. We've been actually thinking about going back up there for some of that. All right, here's my little baby wreath. Little baby leaves. Now my little baby leaves the shapes, just in case you kind of have to do a little freehanding here. Looks like you make a parenthesis and then another parenthesis and then those connect. And that just makes fun little leaves. And then these are those big roses that we had. And I'm just going to do the outside of them since basically they're all the they're just going to get covered up with color blocking, which is just the solid base color uh, on the top of the rose. And then I'll have to work on all the detail on top, so I won't worry about doing all that extra detail. This is our fence post. And you can kind of be casual with this line. I mean, you definitely want to make it straight, but fence posts are definitely very weathered and they'll have some imperfections. So if it doesn't quite end up being super perfect, I wouldn't worry about that. That'll probably just make it look a little bit more natural and lifelike, or rather what you would see in real life. 
I don't know that we want our fence posts to come alive, but <laughs> it sounds a little weird. All right, so now we're just sketching in little striations of that old weather barn wood. I take that all the way across. And that's not super necessary either because I'm going to paint over all the top of this too, but just so you don't lose that reference, I'll just do a little bit of that. And even if it bleeds through the paint a little bit, it's going to be a nice effect there. All right, so let's do, this is a little rose, another little rose. And then we've got a couple little cute arrows coming up here. And then fun little leaves. Fun little leaves. And then here is our little feather. Little center line and we've got little stripes. Another little feather here. And then this is a kind of a different feather, but definitely still a, a little feather reference. And these are some more feather references. Okay, so that's fun. All right, so now, this is exciting. I think we have all of our tracing done. Pretty cool, okay. All right, so now let's start painting. Okay, so very awesome. So we've got, let me give you a little lowdown on what we have here. All right, so if you get paint from us in the mail, you get this beautiful little kit here, which is awesome. And it is really heavy body paint, so it lasts a really long time. You can actually add water to it um, in the mix. What I will say about it is you wanna make sure that your canvas is flat on a surface so that you can add water to it a little bit more freely to extend it out and it doesn't you won't have water runs that way but I wouldn't paint on an easel that way because that can cause issues a lot of water runs so just make sure it's flat all good and then um, I've got my water nearby to give all my cute brushes a bath and then I've got my brushes nearby so with the kit we've got a mama brush a little buddy and then a little bit brush here and that's how I refer to my little family of brushes and then you can use either some paper towels or just an old rag or a wash rag. Works just great. Help kind of dry off. Um, and then I've got my paint all ready to go. So I just, I'm using really simple plates and I've got some paint all ready to go here. Okay, so now um, I am going to start with my mama brush. Okay, so this is mama. She's the biggest brush that I've got. And I'm gonna go ahead and paint into the sky first. Uh, so what I will do is I'm going to pick up a nice big dollop of the white and then just a tiny amount of the gold or you can even use just a tiny touch of primary yellow too. And then just a tiny little touch of black. So what happens is that tiny amount of black mixes with the white and it makes a really beautiful gray. And then you've got a little bit of this gold that pushes into it and that makes you know, a really nice taupe or primary yellow also works really well for that to help make kind of a taupe color. All right, so that's a little bit of a base that I've got. And I've also got my blue nearby that I might just kind of gradually work into that. All right, so I start pushing this in like little cross strokes, just back and forth, like the letter X, just over and over and over again. And then I wanna keep that white handy. So I've got that on my plate nearby. So I'll push that in back and forth. And then as I'm working in, I just gradually um, alternate in with just little touches of blue as I work too. So there's that blue and it just pushes in just back and forth. I get a really nice textural effect this way. So again, it looks like the letter X over and over and over again. And then little touches of blue. 
and I'll just keep working this back and forth. Again, just feels like you make the letter X and you wanna hold that brush parallel to the canvas. So that will give you a light, gentle hand and allows that paint to just really rest on the surface there. Now I know I'm covering up my letters, but I promise you it will bleed through just a little bit and it's certainly enough for me to hit it later on and go back over it later. So again, just continue working this in. Little cross strokes back and forth. And then on your edges, of course, you're always welcome to go back and touch up your sides too. Well, hello, Larry. Welcome. How's life in Nichols Hills? <laughs> I hope it's wonderful. I'm gonna hit that. I see a little bit of transparency there, so I'm gonna hit that again. All right, now I'm getting a line edge that I have to cut in nearby, so I'm gonna go ahead and do my cut-in work. So I've got my mama here, and I'm gonna go ahead and do my cut-in work around this shape. And I'm going to keep it just real neat in the beginning, so it's not really matching the rest of the texture, but I promise I'm going to come back in and work back into that. So just doing the cut-in work here real fast. Now, I want it to blend back into that texture so that it belongs with its background. So then I'm going to come back into this and just do my little crisscross again and just crisscross into it. And I do push into some of those pure colors as I go. So as I go, I've got my light gray that I've mixed up that I'll push into, but then I want to alternate back in with a little bit of some gold too and just crisscross that in. That gives a nice textural blend into the background. And then a little bit of blue, work that in. So it's definitely an Oklahoma sky, I think. Looks like there might be a storm coming. And you don't have to do that. You can do, because some people are like, I don't want a storm coming. <laughs> Please don't. I don't want a storm in my sky. So no worries, you can do just like more blue and white, you can just do a bright blue sky, which would just be uh, more of just the lot of white, little bit of blue. Don't push as much gray into it. Of course, thunderstorms aren't too bad. Those are fun, most of the time. All right, so there is our beautiful sky. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the sides here. I wanna make sure I've got all the front of my canvas covered. All right, very nice. Okay, my next stage now is to come into the front of the barn. Hi, Mom. <laughs> ah. I am very hot in my studio today. Love you, Mom. It actually wasn't that bad earlier, and then I got one of those. I think they call them power surges. Those are so fun. <laughs> okay, um, so now I'm gonna make some gray to come in over the surface area of the front of my barn here. So, just light gray. So I need my white and my black. So I'm gonna pick up a dollop of the white again. Actually, this is very similar to what we had going on up here, but it's just, just a touch of black with my white. So push those together. And then I'm gonna go ahead and just take this all the way across. And then as I'm working it, I also touch into a little bit of black. So again, those lines that you make 
I mean, they're there, I think, is just a nice guide to help you understand kind of where to go with this. But you will just kind of end up painting over them, too. So come in with some gray. Let's do our cut-in work here. And then I'll show you again the striations that come in afterwards. All right, so let's get that cut-in work done. Again, just gray first. And it's getting pretty tight in some of these areas, so I may have to switch over to a smaller brush. And then I'll work back in those little lines again. So again, just gray. So big white, little touch of the black. And then we'll work this into all those little tiny shapes. So let me talk about what I'm doing here too. So flat side of the brush, hold it over on the side. Thanks, Mom. <laughs> and then when you wanna work into a tiny area, you can also use the little tiny line edge of this brush. You just hold it like a pencil and you work into this. Uh, that's red in there for the heart. So this mama brush is super versatile because it can do the flat side and then it can also do that tiny little line edge to work into some pretty tiny little areas too. I'm working in around this little leaf here. That's what that is. It looks really strange in just a traced form. These are going to be roses. They look a little lumpy and weird right now. All right, do I have all my, yeah, let's see. All right, now I need to start working in a little bit darker now. So I'm gonna take that same mama brush, just kind of squeegee out some of that excess paint. I'm gonna push into a little bit more of that black. And I'll go ahead and do the roof line here. And our roof line all the way down. All right, now, little lines that we, and see, that's why I like Sharpie, because I can see it kind of peeking through. So I am going to hold my brush like a pencil. I make sure that I have a very tiny little thin line edge there. And then I just kind of lightly drag it across. And so this gives me that old weathered wood look. So again, just nice firm pressure into the black. Check your edge, make sure it's very thin and just kind of lightly take it across here. Just almost, it feels like making long dashes for that striated look there, that old weathered wood coming through the back. So very fun how that looks, very simple. And then I have a long line coming down here. All right, super sweet. Okay, now I've got black in the middle of my little windows here. And then also, well, I'm gonna say, am I gonna say that? Well, watch me not make up my mind. Hmm. <laughs> okay, normally I like to leave black to the very end, but in this case, it won't interrupt anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and push in my little bit of black into these little windows here. I don't wanna forget them. You gotta be careful sometimes where you do put in the black because you have to watch what's around it and make sure that you don't 
muddy up a bright color that will come in. I don't want to put it here because I've got bright roses that will come in. And so if I do my black now, then it will make my roses look very muddy and I don't want that to happen. But I just have like a light white gray coming in around those. So we're safe there. And I'm gonna come back in with my little bit brush and I'll go ahead and do a little bit of white and a little bit of gold. And I'll just do my little windowsill here. And these windows have really had it. They're very weathered. So you don't have to worry about being very perfect with your lines for sure, because they're not worried about it. In fact, to make it look a little bit older, you almost want some of those imperfections in there. Got a little window peeking out here. And I have black in there too, but again, real close to the roses and bright colors coming up. So I'm gonna do some planning and not put that black in just yet. All right, next up will be red with my red heart. So I will use my little bit brush and just some red or let's see here. With our kit, let me show you some options too. So we've got uh, some magenta. And this will help you get kind of a cool red color. So you can mix a little bit of magenta with the cadmium red. So our cadmium red is pretty warm and making sure, yeah, that is what that is. So if you mix it with a little bit of the magenta, then you will get a nice cool red. Or if you've got some paint at home and you just have a red that's a little bit more on the cool side, you can just use that. So again, magenta and cadmium makes a, a cool red. See how it now matches perfectly here? All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and push this into this beautiful heart. And this is my little bit brush. And as I load up the brush, I wanna do a little twist. See what's happening? My brush is becoming quite thick it's the belly of it's full, so it makes it sometimes harder to get into some really tight areas and give you more control. So load it up by doing a little twist into the paint. It, it's still filled, but it twists the end of the brush into a nice fine point, which gives you more control when you're doing these little tiny details in here. All right, and just to recap, those are little arrows. Those will come in later. That was a little leaf. I'll do that later too. I'll, I'll follow up with that. And then these are roses. They will be. They look a little weird. They look like big lumpy circles right now, but that's okay. We'll get those figured out. They will all start to make sense again. All right, so we have held the brush like a pencil with this tiny little brush. So what it's done is it's created a lot of brush strokes and transparency. So now I need to take the same brush. He has a nice little dollop on, can y'all see that? Where am I? Oh, <laughs> there we go. Okay, now um, take that brush and uh, it's nice if you can see it, huh? Uh, and then you wanna hold it over to the side and see that will give you more of that paint over the top, resting on the top. So hold it parallel to the canvas and then that will help you get good coverage.
Sometimes I have to lean back because my film lights and I can't, there, I can see it now. All right, sweet, sweet. Okay, now I've got some like lighter pink roses happening here. So when in Rome, I still have my brush all loaded up with some red. So I'll just go ahead and take advantage of that. And I'm gonna start to push a little bit of white into that mix. And then work that into those tiny little roses. So we're just doing the solid color blocking into those shapes. Same here, I want a lighter pink. So these will be little roses here too. Those will too, but those are gonna be a different color. All right, so now let's rinse out a little bit here. Uh, and then I want my little bit brush, even tinier one I've got here. And I'm gonna go ahead and go into some white. This is gonna be our first layer. So I'm gonna do, looks like I make a little parentheses and then another little parentheses. And then I work this down in a circular pattern. I'll take it all the way around. And you can just leave it real simple like that if you want. Or you can continue on with me and do the next phase, which is what I really like to do. I'll come in with a darker shade next. So, but you can already see how that's really starting to look more like a rose at this point. So just tiny little white half circles or tell your brain it's like making a tiny little parentheses. And it's so tiny in these little tiny roses that it might make more sense to tell your brain it's like making a little comma. That's another way to think of it. All right, so I'm gonna rinse out now. Let's talk about rinsing out too. So I have my little bucket of water here. I go ahead and spin my brush round and round and round in a little circle. Apply a little bit of firm pressure that helps release the paint. And then when I'm done, I like to go ahead and just dry it off completely so that there's no excess water in the brush and the brush is just moist. So that'll keep you from having any water runs, especially if you're working in like a vertical state on an easel. So if you're working flat, like on your table, you don't have to worry that much about water runs. I mean, you might get a little pool that you can lift off with a little dab of paper towel, uh, but it's, it's not as uh, big of an issue if you're working flat. All right, so now let's do the darkest color next on the roses. So I've got my little bit brush and let's just pop in with some of that red. And we wanna make what looks like a little spot, a little shadow right in the middle. This feels like you make a teeny tiny little comma. And then we'll do like little parentheses, parentheses, parentheses. So it's just a lot of repetition of that same stroke that you do all over the surface area. Comma, and then parentheses, parentheses. So now you have a little bit more of that shadow coming in over the top of the rose. And we'll do the same thing here, a little shadow spot right in the middle. And then just a few more of those little tiny parentheses. I think I got a little heavy handed with the red, so I went back in with a little bit more white, which you are always welcome to do that. So that's a really easy shift, and it's definitely something that happens. Sometimes you can be a little too heavy handed in one direction or another, so you can always come back in and rework a little bit with a lighter shade or darker, either way. So sometimes it might be too light and you lose your shadows. And so there's a lot of forgiveness and a lot of ways to work back into it. So now you have cute little roses everywhere. Isn't that wonderful? All right, so now let's do some of these lighter roses in here. These are really pretty. And I want some primary yellow and I've got my white. All right, so let's see. I've got my little bit brush. Actually, do I wanna use, I'm gonna use a little buddy. 
All right, so here's little buddy, little flat top here, and I pick up some white. Let's do some of that primary yellow, a little bit of the gray. All right, we'll go ahead and work that into the surface area. Add just a touch of gold to this too. Real subtle, but that gives it a creamy look. All right, so that's the first step with our roses. Now what I wanna do is the white. So I come back in with my little bit brush and just white paint. And I go ahead and just do little touches of white that are in that shape of like a parentheses or little half circles. And you'll take those all the way around in a circular pattern. And then we have our little baby rose over here same thing, lots of repetition. All right, now we need to come in with the shadow. So I've got just a little bit of some black that I will add to my white. I want a darker charcoal gray here, but not necessarily too dark. So, all right, so I think we've got a nice medium gray here. I've got my little bit brush. So I'll do a little spot right in the center. There's my little comma, little push. And then kind of do a little push. I like to do this when the uh, paint is still a little bit wet too. So you get a nice soft blend. So this is that little bit of shadow that happens. All right, so now we look like we've got these uh, creamy, you know, white roses. And you can always hit those later with a little bit more, like if it gets a little too dark on you, you can always work in a lot more white too. So you can always push in a lot of white and just kind of go back and forth. All right, so now we've got some wintry grass happening here, or like a wheat field, so it's kind of up to you on what you want, want to happen there. So I'm going to be doing that primary yellow again, a little bit of the gold, some white. Maybe a touch of that black too, to give it kind of a taupe feeling. And then I'll go ahead and push this into the surface area. And actually, I'm using too small of a brush. I want Mama. Okay, so here's Mama. She's my biggest brush. And I wanna go ahead and just sweep this in here. I'll, I will teach you how to do the grass here in a moment, but for right now, I just want this, I want this color blocking done. So we'll get this all placed into the surface area. This is my fence post in here. We'll work that in in a moment here. Let's see. All right, so, oops, got a little bit more right there. All right, so now let's do uh, use my little buddy brush here and we'll work in some of that. You know what? Not yet. I don't want to do that yet. Let's see. I want to do my little feathers here first. I kind of forgot about my little feathers. Um, I want some blue and white, blue and white on one of these. So this is my little buddy brush. I'm just following the stroke there, but it just, it's a downward diagonal stroke, kind of flips up on the ends. And this next one, 
come up some pure blue there too. Just hit it with a little bit more of that vibrant blue. Okay, now I want some violet. I'm gonna do some violet now. That'll be really pretty. All right, so here we go with some violet. I still have my brush loaded up with some of that white and blue, so it, it might even push this to a little bit of a periwinkle, which is pretty cool. And so I've got another little feather here nearby. So just light feathery strokes here. And I'm gonna do a little bit more on top of the blue with some of this violet. It's a nice little accent and it shows up really well. All right, and then I've got a little bit in here I need to work in. Let's do a little bit more white. And let's do a little bit of that red in there. So I'll get a hint of magenta happening. And still just feathering strokes in here. All right, now these next two feathers here, I'm gonna go ahead and go with a little bit more of an earth tone effect. So on this next one, I just, I'll just i do a little bit more of the gold. So I've got my little bit brush and just a little bit of this gold and the white, and I'll go ahead and push into this next feather here with those lighter tones. And then this one I'm going to leave is more of just a stripe with just a light, light cream, whitish cream, and then the black stripe. All right, now I've touched into a little bit of black and I'll do that center line through the feather. And then follow the outside edge that will do those little feathering strokes. And I wanna reemphasize the feathers in here too. So I'll come back in with just a little bit more black and my little bit brush. And I'll do those center lines and the feathering strokes over the top of all that color that we did. So you see the color underneath that you see the pop of the feather stroke coming in over the top. All right, looking very lovely. And then this little guy right here, we just have a teeny amount of white to work in. So I'm taking a little bit and just a touch of white and I'm working it just in between those little stripes. Then I'll rinse out and I'll take a little bit again, dry them off real quick. And I'll go back into the black here and I'll do my central line again, real delicate. The outline edge so that that didn't get lost. And then I'll go ahead and re-emphasize my little black stripes again. All right, and then I've got my little arrows up here. So I'll go ahead and do a little touch into some blue. I've got, I still have black, but I'm gonna touch into a little bit of that blue. So it kind of gives me a slate. And then I'll go ahead and work in the little tops of my arrows here. And I'm gonna add just a teeny amount of white to that too. Kind of lighten that up a little bit. And then I'll hit the black one more time and do the little line for the arrow. And just do a little quick outline. 
All right, now for leaves. All right, so we have my little bit brush again, and then we're gonna do a little bit of the green, a little bit of the white, push those two together. Make sure y'all can see that there. And then I just touch on top here. Just a little touch on either side and that gives me a nice little texture pattern for the leaves. And then same thing here, just a tiny little touch. White and green. And then I'll just hit on the side of the brush. And as it applies pressure, it kind of pushes down into a fun little leaf shape. And I'll take that up to each side diagonally until the very top, and then I'll make one more right in the center. Then I'll do a little tiny touch of black with that green and white. That'll give me like a nice darkened sage. And I'll do a little stem right through the middle. All right, lovely. Okay, now I've got a little bit of this green and white. I still need to do my little leaves right over here. So just tiny little it's like parentheses, parentheses. Now I can go ahead and do the black in the middle of those windows there. Since I've already got all of my brighter colors all worked in, and I don't have to worry about those becoming muted with any of the black. So we'll go ahead and work in that teeny amount of black here in the center. Because there's basically a window that's coming behind here is what's happening. in here. Another little window. And then while I've got my black going, let's go ahead and hit these windows just real quick with a little bit more detail to get around the shape of the window here. And then I come in with a little bit more of the gold and the white just to kind of softly mute that. Alrighty. Okay, so now let's do some grass or wheat, a little bit of both. So I've got my little buddy brush here. I make sure he's just moist. And I'm going to go into, I've got nearby, I've got my gold, maybe some yellow. Actually, let's get some more primary yellow. So we've got some primary yellow. And then got my black nearby, white. Kind of need all those. And I just start to pull up through here. And you can see now why I wanted to go ahead and do my feathers over the top there, because the grass is actually in the foreground. 
And so there might, might be a little bit of overlap coming in over the top of the feathers. So I'll go ahead and pull up just a little bit of that surrounding them. But I just hold that brush right towards the canvas, just like you would hold a pencil. And then I just pick a spot here down below and then I just pull straight up. But I do have a teeny amount of black touched into a little bit of gold, a little bit of that primary yellow. And then sometimes I even come in with a little bit of white too if I wanna add like a little white highlight in there. Or if I feel like I need a little bit more shadow, then I'll touch into a little bit more black and just kind of pull straight up. So I'll do this all over the surface area. So a lot of alternating happening here, a lot of going back into each color now individually and then pushing that through so that I get some pure highlights running through there too. So you can see how now I'll come in with a little bit of just pure gold, now a little bit of yellow, now a little bit of white. And by the way, if you wanted to make this a little bit like a different season, you could just do a whole lot more green in here too. In fact, it's pretty much all these same colors that I'm doing now, but just a lot more green. So that would be how you'd get more of a look at the spring, springtime with this painting. texture down here. I haven't forgot about my little fence post, but I'll go ahead and do all of my grass, get that texture, and then I'll come back in and do my fence post. And then sometimes, you know, make sure and keep checking your brush, make sure your edge is very thin. That way you keep that blade of grass look. All right, very good. So we've got our grass done. And now I want to come in with a little bit more of the smoky tones of the black and the white. And I'm going to go ahead and work this into our fence post now. And I can still see my little Sharpie peeking through. That's why I love using the Sharpie with it. If you didn't use that though, you can always let it dry and then work back in with a trace over the top. But I'm telling you, this is, if you like easier, it's easier. <laughs> if you just do it with a Sharpie first. So work up through that center post there. And I've got one here. And I'm gonna hit this with just a little touch of white on one side. a 
little bit of a shadow there, and then same thing here. Alright, so there's our little fence post. And then I'm going to come in over the top here one more time. Because this little guy, this board is actually out in front. So I'm going to do a little white line here over the front. Hello, Clay. Welcome. So again, hitting the white out in front because, again, this piece of board is definitely out in front. And then maybe a little touch of gold, too, like a little accent there. All right. Let's see, I'm taking a little look here. Let's see what else I can do. Being really close to, I think, being done. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of some shadow around these cute little roses here. Taking my little bit brush, little bit of black, and just doing a light little tiny line to help accentuate these roses. And of course, the roses are definitely more decorative here. I mean, that's, it's not like a, something from a photograph. That's just me going, hey, I want two big giant roses here and I think it's pretty. <laughs> so just know that that's what's happening there, definitely. So some people might be going, hmm, that's odd. But yeah, it's just decorative. Now I'm doing little tiny outlines around my little baby leaves here. So it feels like little tiny, Parentheses, parentheses. So that really helps those little leaves kind of pop out in front. And then, let's see. Another little fun thing you can do too, is you can do, you can just leave it just the way it is. In the model I noticed I did some like some little decorative um, flowers in there. So what I did was I took my little bit brush here and I just barely touched into the white. Just look at a little spot I'm out there. And then I just did a few little, as if there's little flowers. Just a few little flowers in front here. So little diagonals, and then kind of trail it all the way up. So that is an option. You may not like this at all, but or you may, who knows. Another really pretty thing to do too is if you're from Texas and you love blue bonnets, you could have your, this could all be more of that greener grass that I was referring to earlier. And you could do like a violet and some white and some blue in here. And you could make these like little blue bonnets in here too, which would also be quite lovely. That'd be another really pretty variation. So you can just kind of sprinkle these little guys all over to give you like just pretty little white flowers. You could even try to do some, maybe some different colors too. So that's up to you just to be a little different. Like, I don't know, just add a little bit of red in here just for fun. Just kind of barely touch on the end of the brush. All right, so now I think we're almost done. Um, actually, I've got little white details I can do in the windows. It's kind of fun. So I take my tiniest little brush 
and I just hit it there and then here and then there and that pretty much just does the shape for me so one two three so just a little touch makes a little decorative uh, motif there in the window so let's show you what that looks like see cute cute so I barely just touched on the side of the brush there and then you can even do like one more little window Oh, that one's too tiny. I'm going to go ahead and leave that one alone. I should leave that one alone, too. Well, no, I'm not. Let's do one more there. Let's do one. That's kind of funny. I'm going to hit this with a little bit more grass right over the top. All right. Every time I look at it, I think of one more thing I want to do. All right, so now I know I need to do my letters. This is all nice and dry here now. So to make life super easy, I'm going to go ahead and just use a Sharpie. And then you can always, I encourage everybody to do that, Sharpie or a paint pen, just so much easier. You can also use the brush as well. Uh, but I will say this is going to be a lot easier on you to go ahead and get that initial shape in. And then you can touch in over the top with your paint. So, and with your loops, again, remember that detail where you always go around the loop. So that you don't lose that negative space in the center there. And don't worry, I will show you how to paint, but I do want to show you how wonderful this is too. So that's what it looks like if you just sharpie it or a paint pen will have that look so really nice. All right so now I'm going to come in with my little bit brush here and I'm going to twirl it into the paint. So this gives me a nice fine point and you also want to make sure that you dried off your brush really well ahead of time if it's in a vertical state for sure or just lay it flat that's the easiest thing that way you don't have to worry about water runs and so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna touch these up with the paint so that it matches the fluid black look of the paint in terms of color tip if you're paying attention to my pinky you want to make sure you watch where you place it so that it's not in wet paint anytime but you can stabilize your hand for lettering by resting the weight of your hand on your pinky and that helps keep your hand steady so again I went around that loop so I didn't lose the negative space in the middle around that little all right I've got some teeny tiny lines on the S's so I want to see the the brush is pretty thick so I'm gonna do a quick little twirl to make sure I've thinned it back out again and I want to go ahead and get those little tiny lines first and then go around so you, I don't eliminate that negative space got that home uh, actually it says R in there but I'm gonna do that last and really twirl out ahead of time before I hit those tiny little letters in there So definitely twirl out for these tiny little guys. Make it really thin. And I'm gonna watch my pinky too so that I'm not sticking it in the middle of the letter I just did. So 
So there's R, and then I've got tiny little hearts. So go ahead and paint into those. And again, there is no judgment if you want to do all this in Sharpie. <laughs> so it makes it very easy. Yeah, because this may freak, that part really, I think, sometimes freaks people out when they get to that really precise work. Alrighty, so I think we are done with our beautiful painting called Bless Our Home. And we definitely all need a blessing right now, so I extend many blessings to y'all. And I just bless, bless you so much and just wish you a super, super wonderful day. And we will see you tomorrow too. So I guess I'm painting tomorrow at 1230 as well. So again, have a beautiful day. We'll see you soon.